Hey everybody, it's number one Steve here, and I'm bringing you another Monday Night Raw review today. Yesterday's Monday Night Raw, after Hell in the Cell as a whole, I'm going to have to give it a B plus, close to that. It was pretty good, there were some boring spots in there, but you know what? A, a whole three hour show really can't be all that great. You know, it's not like a regular TV show that's 30 minutes or an hour, mostly like 45 minutes or 20 minute show. But, you know, two out of three hours ain't bad, right? So, Raw kicks off with the authority. Um, they're basically bragging about Seth Rollins, how he beat Demon Kane, and now Corporate Kane is gone. <laughs> Congratulating him, say that, he you know, he's the best, he's a the man. They said there's going to be a series of contests later that night for, uh, Determine from all the winners of Hell in a Cell to determine who will be the number one contender for the WWE World Heavyweight title. And although they didn't say, it's most likely that the match will happen at Survivor Series, right? Alright, so Reigns comes out, says he's going to win the Fatal 4-Way in all his matches. So then, uh, it's Reigns versus Kofi Kingston. Pretty good match. I gave it a B, though it was pretty good. Um, also, I gave the opening segment of Raw a B. Normally, we're like, oh, the authority's opening up, or oh, it's a Rollins, or whatever like that. But we're good, right? And I want to touch a moment on this for a second, because I think we can all see it coming. Um, Dean Ambrose has, like, been telling Roman Reigns, yo, man, you got this, you do this, it's all you, this and that. Yeah, I'm not stupid, but... I can pretty much see a Dean Ambrose turning heel and costing Roman Reigns the uh, win at Survivor Series or whenever he's going to face Rollins with the title. I doubt it'll be next Monday Night on Raw. And if it is, then let's just say, for instance, right, Dean Ambrose cost him the match. Well, if Dean Ambrose cost him the next match next that night on Raw, then you got, okay, Reigns and Ambrose second feud to the Royal Rumble, right? Or even better, what everyone wanted is, you know, a shield triple threat match, two heels in one face. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and, uh, what do you call it? And, uh, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, right? A shield triple threat match, whatever one, everyone wanted, right? It's like, Dean Ambrose is heel, he doesn't like Reigns, he doesn't like Reigns anymore, but he doesn't like, uh, Rollins either. So, I mean... If there was going to be a triple triple threat match, unless they were all either face or heels, I mean, I guess it would be the perfect opportunity to do this. But I can feel a Roman Re a Dean Ambrose heel turn, so you heard it here first. Next, we had Cesaro versus Kevin Owens. And again, it was a pretty good match, and I gave that match a B. Although the only decision I would have gone from it is that Cesaro sort of won. Um... You know, I think Cesaro so is gaining momentum, you know, with the Cesaro section and everything like that. And I think Cesaro deserves the, I think he deserved the win, you know. So, but it is what it is. And this whole thing with him and Michael Cole, I don't know what's up with that. I mean, whatever, but still. I'm like, why do you have beef with Michael Cole? He's just an announcer, right? right? So then we had Team PCB versus Team Bella. As we all know, Cena was out on Raw because he's on his personal break right now. But um, we don't know if Nikki, we've heard that she may or may not be on a personal thing too, which obviously would be with Cena, because that's Cena's girlfriend. But um, we don't know. She was on Raw, so maybe that was like her last appearance, and then, you know, she'll be on break or whatever like that. Team Bella did win, and obviously after that, Paige attacked. No one really cared about the match because we're tired of seeing six te Team Diva matches. And uh, after which... Uh, Everyone liked it. So Paige is officially full heel now. About time. Um, yeah. So next we had Del Rio versus Neville again. Yeah, it was a good match. And I, it was a good match. And I'd give it a B. But I gave it a C actually. And the reason why I gave it a C is because this whole Del Rio and uh, Zip Carter thing, right? Like, I understand that Ricardo's not back. But. To partner him up with Zeb Carter to form countries called Mex America makes absolutely no sense. To top it off for that, whenever Zeb Carter reaches out his hand to extend it, Del Rio is looking at him like, "Yeah, shaking hands." Like he doesn't want to, but he's like, "I'll trust you for now until the moment is right." So, plus he. 
Chelsea kind of seemed happy, but because of the things that happened in the past, but you know, whatever, right? All right, so then we had the Dully Boys taking on Ryback against <laughs> the Dully Boys and Ryback taking on Sheamus, Cesaro, Sheamus, uh, Rusev, and King Barrett. Um, those three together are actually pretty good, although this match made no sense, and it looked like the faces were on the way to win, and then they st he was still one, which is, I guess, all right. I gave that a C, but, um, did I give it a C? Yeah, I gave it a C. Yeah, but the thing is, I think those three make a great tag team, and they should probably should come up with some name, because, like, obviously, Sheamus is from Ireland, Barrett's from England, and Rusev is from Bulgaria, so you have, like, the international heels or whatever, something along those lines. Maybe when Lana comes back, she'll join them or whatever like that, because she is the ravishing Russian. So, next we had Bray Wyatt's explanation. He said that basically to sum it all up, he said that he's going to come after Roman Reigns again, but not until he has been reborn. And in order for him to be reborn, he needs to feed on the Undertaker's soul, which is why he attacked him last night. A lot of people say that the Undertaker has to lose this match so you know he can pass the torch or to say. I don't see it that way. I mean, too many losses. It's kind of like Sting right now. It's like, why did you bring Sting in just to lose, right? Am I, so it's like, why bring Taker back, have him celebrate 25 years of his career if you're just going to have him lose? And again, I don't want to see Undertaker and Braun Strowman at WrestleMania. That would be the dumbest match ever. Nobody wants to see that. So, WWE, you better come up with something better, and it better be John Cena, or it better be Sting. Heck, I'll even take Undertaker versus Kane, but I'm not seeing Braun Strowman versus The Undertaker. That's dumb. It don't make sense. So, that's how I feel about that. Then, but I did give it an A because it was good. Oh, also after that, Kane came out to attack him to avenge for his brother, but he got beat down just like Taker did the night before, and they dragged him off. Again, my explanation, and obviously it's going to be Team Bray versus Team Taker. I believe my dream team, it should be Kane, Taker, Sting, and Finn Balor. Because obviously Finn Balor can turn into the demon. And obviously Sting, Kane, and Taker are all dark figures. So, you know, it all makes sense. Team Darkness against Team Darkness, right? Alright, so then we have Big E versus Ziggler. And, you know, my boy Big E, well, I mean, my boy Dolph Ziggler. I like Big E, too, because he, I think he's the most funniest one out of the new day. Um... He, uh, the back was good, you know, Ziggler was getting beat down, you know, Tyler Breeze was out there watching him, but he didn't attack him, which I was kind of happy about, because I'm like, okay, maybe we're going to see Ziggler versus Rollins at Survivor Series, you know, I, they're all, you said, you guys saying you're tired of seeing part-timers, so, you know, let's get this, right, WWE get it right, and Ziggler didn't win the match, I was happy about that, I'm also happy that Tyler Breeze didn't attack him, so I don't know if there's in a feud or not, but, no, whatever. Also, Ziggler was the one that did not get any rest the most. He was resting for, like, what, 10, 15 minutes? That's not a lot of time. So, next, we had the Fatal 4-Way for the number one contendership. Ron was sitting out there saying he can't wait to face whoever because he knows he's going to beat him down. And the match was good. A+. plus. Channing, everyone chanting, this is awesome. And it was the final way how it ended with Kevin Owens and Ra Kevin Owens and uh, Reigns, Roman Reigns. Picks him up for the pop-up power bar. Superman punch followed with the spear. Excellent way to end. Good choice. I would have preferred Ziggler. You know what? It either would have been Ziggler or Roman Reigns. I would have been happy with both of those, either one. Roman Reigns won. No confrontation, just them staring at each other going, it's on now. It's on. And really, if you think about it, since Rollins has become him, besides a few taxi matches, it's never really been Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns. It's been Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose, but never Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns. So this will be their first pay-per-view match one-on-one -on -one against each other. So that's good. Whether on Rollins will win or lose or not, I don't know. But I'm hearing stuff like it's going to be a triple threat at WrestleMania and Rollins will go all the way. So we'll see. And uh, that's pretty much been the Raw review for today. Um... I don't really got anything else, but uh, you, know, you guys just remember to please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out my other videos. Check out my Hell in a Cell preview, I mean results review that I did yesterday. And uh, remember, if you're not down with that, I've just got two words for you. Peace out.